Hello again, everybody. It's Scott Casper, Takedown Media. Our coverage of the sport continues today. We head to Florida, sunny South Florida to be exact, where we find Logan Storley getting ready for the next round of, uh, of practice, if you will, as he's deep in a camp that'll uh, prepare him for his very first professional fight with Bellator coming up in July. He joins us now as the 24-year-old. Logan, how are you? Good. How are you doing? Good, man. It's been a while for you uh, uh, to be on the program, but uh, we appreciate you joining us to discuss the signing with Bellator. Uh, before we do that, let's go back and, and, and look at how it all ended for you with the Gophers. You had an outstanding senior campaign, 31-7 and overall, 12-2 and in your dual meet record, Big Ten record, had a stunning record there, 7-2, and five pins on the year. Five majors as well, and five tech falls, triple fives. I like that. I'd like to be able to roll that on the crap table. How about that? You're an All-American, letter winner, winner of the team's most exciting wrestler award. You led the team in techs, as I mentioned. Um, Twelve of your victories were ranked wrestlers, second most on the team. Did you have fun in college? Yeah, I did. You know, it was a, it was a great experience, and, you know, I got, uh, got to be a four-time All-American, but at the end of the day, I didn't accomplish you know, what I went there to do, you know, I went there to win, um, multiple national titles and it didn't happen. And, um, so, you know, I did enjoy it. I had a great team, you know, we got second, third, second, eighth, and I think we won three national dual titles. So we had a very good team, but, um, we just didn't get over the hump. And I think that's why I'm, uh, continuing to compete and, you know, you know, to reach that pinnacle of MMA is because I never got to do it, um, at the college level. You know, I recall um, talking to you upon your decision of making uh, uh, the commitment to Minnesota, um, you know, right out of high school. And I remember that you were exceedingly conversational. You seemed to be very decided on what you were going to do on your career. Even then, I think you had an eye on uh, wanting to compete in mixed martial arts. Um, How has your MMA career gone uh, prior to uh, signing with Bellator? Good. You know, I'm 5-0. and uh, I got five finishes, four of them in the first round. Uh, so it's going well. I'm um, just improving. But, you know, now it's time to take the next step. It's really time to take the next step and start fighting the best guys in the world and, um, you know, letting everyone see, you know, this is what I've been doing the last two years. And, you know, I'm very confident in my abilities and I train with the best guys in the world and I know where I'm at. So it'll just a matter of time until everyone starts to see that themselves. Your fights with the LFA, RFA banner uh, flying have been uh, KO or TKO finishes. You mentioned you've only once gone to the second round. You must have been exhausted. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I think it lasted for about 12, 13 seconds in the second round. So, you know, continue to make that a theme is uh, to have short fights. It's uh, It's got to be exciting for you getting, you know, all the attention based on your belief. You've had a total belief in yourself uh, since high school and even during high school. What's been the media attention like for you? You know, it's been good. Um, I, I kind of talked about it, <clears throat> you know, some other people asking about the pressure and signing with Bellator and, you know, like there's going to be a whole new spotlight. And, um, you know, if I didn't want that, you know, I should go do something else. If I wasn't co- confident in myself or I didn't think I could be the champ, then I wouldn't be doing this. And, um, you know, there was multiple times in college, you know, uh, the only time we get a lot of um, media attention is the big duels, the Iowa, Minnesota, Penn State, Ohio State, you know, and Ohio, uh, what is it? Iowa versus Oklahoma State had 40,000 people. You know, that doesn't happen that often. And then we get the attention at NCAAs, you know, so we have five months of competing, you know, where a lot of people don't notice. And so MMA, it's kind of nice to, you know, people actually see what you're doing and they talk about it. And, you know, so I, I wish the sport of wrestling would have had a little more. So, a deeper appreciation um people on the outside so they understand what college kids go through what a grind it was for the four years i was there um but you know i'm i'm enjoying it and you know it's part of it's part of mma did that Um, grind cause you to be a better student do you think yeah you know i i think maybe you know during college it was definitely one of the it was tough but you know now that i'm done with college and i'm doing other things in my life (laughs) It's a lot of things are easy that come on my plate compared to what I was dealing with in college. You know, I had class two, three, four classes some days, and then I had to go to wrestling practice. And then I was living in Minnesota, so I had to walk home in the negative 15 degree weather. Um, you know, there was a lot of things. It was a constant, it was a constant schedule. Um, you know, for four years, and you had to deal with a lot, cutting weight and schoolwork, and 
your life and everything. And so now that, you know, my life slowed down quite a bit, um, it's pretty easy compared to what college was. We're talking with Walter White Logan Storley. He's made the commitment and Bellator has too, to add you to their roster. Uh, let's talk a little bit about, um, the signing process. First of all, you have management. Tell us who your managers are. Uh, Dave Martin and then Randall Alleman. Um, you know, they've helped me a lot and they've had my back since, uh, day one, you know, they, they were uh, interested in me and signed right after, I think a month after NCAA is my senior year. And we had a plan, a game plan to do things the right way. Um, and take the right fights right away and continue to get better and, um, you know, be with the right guys for training. And now we're here and we're signing with Bellator a year, you know, over a year and a half later. And now it's time to uh, hit that next level. And, you know, you just keep hitting level after level and continuing to get better and doing things the right way. Did you watch or were you present in New York City as Bellator made its uh, biggest pay-per-view fight date? Uh, to career, uh, to their career, I should say, in New York City at Madison Square Garden. Yeah, um, I cornered uh, Chandler actually. So <laughs> you know, I watched uh, I watched the 170 pound uh, well, between Lima and Larkin, and you know, I'm <clears throat> I watched that that uh, title fight, and you know, I was watching the other guys, and you know, I had my eye out on the 170 pounders walking around. I mean, that's just how I am. You got to size everyone up and see what uh, see what you're working against. But uh, it was great. Um, Bellator ran a great show. I went to the press cr- press conference. Um, I went to Viacom. You know, I saw everything um, there was to see with the company, and, you know, I was very impressed. And so I'm happy with my decision. And um, now it's just time to step in the cage July 14th, take, uh, take care of work, and then we'll go from there. I don't think you ever got to wrestle at uh, MSG, did you? No, no, that was the year after uh, after I graduated. So what, what did you that. think of the historic uh, uh, facility that is Madison yeah, Square Garden? Yeah, it's it's one of a kind. You know, we went up in the elevator, um, you know, with the Madison Square Garden um, logo on there, and through the tunnel they have the pictures of you know Ali and every performer that's been there, and so it's pretty crazy um, to be walking <laughs> those same tunnels and the same lot, you know, locker rooms and things like that. That was a you know, that was a cool moment to kind of take everything in. It really is. It's fun working there, I'll tell you that. Uh, you're going to be making your debut with Bellator on July 14th at Bellator 181. You're going to be meeting uh, Kemyal Haley, or Haley, pardon me. Uh, what are your thoughts on, on your opponent, and uh, how did the how did this particular fight come into being? <clears throat> um, you know, he's, uh, I think he's 7-4. and four. Um I've watched a little film on him, you know, he wrestles, but, uh, I'm very confident, you know, I, I take care of what I have myself, you know, um, that's what I focus on. I mean, I don't focus on everyone else, um, what they do all their, you know, come the last two weeks, I'll look at some things, make sure, you know, if there's anything that surprises us or we see on tape, we'll, we'll talk about it and discuss it. But right now, um, it's just about getting better for me is working on my striking, keeping my wrestling, um, clean and, uh, not losing, uh, losing any strides. You know, I see a lot of wrestlers that are in their, you know, couple fights in and they start, their wrestling's not as sharp anymore. Right. And so that's one thing I've definitely, um, you know, I'm a wrestler first. And so, uh, you know, I'll, I'll always take care of my wrestling because, you know, I love wrestling and without it, you know, I wouldn't be here. So I'm going to keep that sharp and continue to work on my hands and, but, you know, I'm, I'm confident July 14th I'll go out there and I will get the win and I will stop him once again and make it six opponents. And then um, we'll see what Bellator has in store for me next. All right. So to prep for a, a fight the right way, you've got to go into a camp mode, if you will. Uh, you're doing that with Combat Club in Florida with Henry Hoops and uh, uh, Greg Jones. Is Henry the one holding the mitts for you? Yeah, Henry. Um, Henry's a great coach. Um, he's a kickboxer. Um, he's coached the best guys in the world and he's made, uh, I mean, a lot of guys over the past two, three years is really when he came onto the MMA scene for coaching and he's made a big difference on a lot of guys career. And then I have Greg Jones, he's three time national champ from West Virginia is my wrestling coach. And then I have, uh, you know, lots of great partners to work with. And then, um, you know, we just put it all together, but usually for most fights, I'll do an eight week camp. But this one, I went from right in for my last fight. Um, right into this so it's just you know i'm in shape and um i'm healthy and my weight's good so 
right now it's just it's doing the right things, getting everything sharpened up and being ready for July 14th. How did you end up at Combat Club in Florida? Because uh, let's face it, uh, there's lots of places to go around the country, but how did you end up there? Uh, I came down here for with Mike Chandler. Uh, Mike Chandler was down here, and so I was just going to come down here for about two weeks. And then uh, after being down here for the two weeks, I was like, this is uh, this is the place where I need to be um, for my camps. And so after spending the time with Henry and Greg and the training partners, um, I really uh, really fell in love with what was down here in the atmosphere and the, the team. And Henry is uh, the best striking coach in the game right now. And so that's where this is where I need to be um, for my training camps. Just can you break down Michael's fight? You were in his corner. What did you see? Uh, you know, it was uh, I think it was kind of a freak accident. Um, you know, he leg kicked and you know he kind of checked it, and all of a sudden he went went back and stepped in the middle of the cage, and his ankle rolled. And he got up, and you know we were feeling okay, and then all of a sudden it just kept crumbling and crying. You know, it looked like you know snapping his ankle every time he took a step, and. Um, you know, so it's hard because he's always bouncing in and out and he's light on his feet and he couldn't do it every time he'd go to post. It'd just roll over and then, um, you know, he ended up dropping um, Primus with that right hand. But when he went to chase him down, he couldn't post on it. So I'm not, you know, it is what it is right now. Uh, it was tough to see, especially, you know, I, he was my roommate and training partner the last eight weeks, but he'll be back. I have no doubt about it. And he'll show everyone what um, a healthy Michael Chandler can do. And and was uh, I mean the fight was ultimately called, but or the bout b- b- was, but uh, was it the right call? It, it, it's tough, you know. Even me as um, a corner guy and you know his main training partner, it was tough for me to watch. You know, I didn't know if his ankle was snapped or what was going on. So I understand a little bit, but you know, Michael's a, an absolute warrior, and you know he, he would have found a way to. Um, continue to fight you know he wasn't gonna he wasn't gonna quit so i don't know you know what what the right call was it definitely it looked it looked gruesome out there and it looked like his ankle was snapped but i mean i don't know what you do from a doctor and a referee standpoint i mean Um, if they if they tell you in the ambulance that your foot is not broken or your ankle is not broken i should say uh, they should be able to tell that if you're a professional doctor on the outside of the cage or inside the cage, for that matter. It's just unfortunate. I don't yeah. want to spend a lot of time uh, on, on Michael, although he deserves all of all that he can get, and uh, it's just what it is. All right. So uh, again, we've got a we've got the fight date for you to make your Bellator debut, July 14th, Bellator 181. And uh, do you have any sponsors you want to promote uh, today in our in our interview? Are you working on some, or where are you at with that? Yeah, no, uh, American Ethanol and Sanford um, Health have been two big sponsors that have had my back from day one. Um, those two have really helped me. And then I also have uh, Lost Auto from back home and, uh, you know, McGuire Iron. I have some I have some good people back home that have really helped me out, and they've made a big difference in the training process and making things go a little smoother. Well, they're all proud of you. Yeah. Right? I mean, you're yeah. a hometown guy that's done well, and even when you were still in high school, you had people that were very proud of you. Yeah, yep. So that's a, that's a good thing to have, man. I'll take hometown, uh, you know, folks behind me any 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 day of the week. You know, it's a long way from Webster High School in Roslyn, South Dakota. Yeah. But you know what? You've done it well. Continued success, my friend, and I'm looking forward to seeing your hand raised in victory on that night of July 14th at Bellator 181. Well, I appreciate it. I really do. Haley don't know what he's facing. <laughs> he's, he's facing Logan Storley. Logan, thanks for joining us in the Nike hot seat today. Thanks for having me. I appreciate it. We'll do it again after your victory, okay? All right, that sounds good. I'm Scott Casper for Takedown Media. Special guest today, Nike hot seat, Logan Storley.